Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. I'm really excited today. I'm going to be introducing you guys to a new series where we focus on the meat and potatoes, the really important do's and do nots when designing and installing Daikin VRVS. It's very possible that we're going to get through this first section of, of content and I'm going to realize just because I always do this to you guys, the video is going to be longer than I had anticipated because I like to give you all the information, even when I'm trying to only tease you and give you the meat and potatoes, you're gonna get the veggies, you're gonna get the dessert, you're gonna get the beverage. So in the event that that happens, um, you might notice that 20 minutes into the video, I'm gonna kind of just, I'm gonna call it and we're gonna go to the next video. It's gonna be more videos this way, but I really wanna keep these suckers, you know, 20 minutes at most. And so we might start off with product and technology today, and then I'm just gonna cut, and I'm gonna give you guys something in the next video. I don't know if I can talk that fast and not give you guys all the information along the way, but we'll do our best. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, if you enjoy this series, please click the like button below. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. My goal is to get to a thousand subscribers. So again, you guys, I appreciate you all for tuning in. Oh, and I will put timestamps down below in the description or in the notes of the video so that in case this does run a little bit too long, you guys can jump from section to section that interests you most and at your convenience. So you guys, again, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's jump right in. Now you guys, before we get started today, I just wanted to reiterate in case you didn't hear me before or in case I haven't already mentioned this, this is not a factory authorized training. This is not a training in any way, shape or form. This is just a discussion. I wanted to get you guys the important bullet points, the important information pulled from my experience and discussions and past trainings, the installation and operation manuals, things from the engineering and service manuals, really just give you guys the bullet points give you guys the breakdown the things you need to know the things you need to look out for this is not a training and i just want to make sure that i make that clear all right you guys so before we get started i do want to break down this series and kind of give you guys an idea of how each of these episodes are going to look so typically when i do host a class with contractors we always start off with a little bit of product discussion. Um, it's very often where contractors will be sitting in on a class who aren't necessarily familiar with VRV, VRF technology. They're used to installing mini splits, things like that. And mini splits and VRF systems are two totally different animals. So I like to spend a little bit of time to discuss the differences in those product technologies. And then I also like to go through and talk about what product is available when you're looking at a VRVS system because there's a lot more injury units available to choose from compared to that mini split system. So I call this video product and technology and we talk about some design considerations. Really the whole goal of this segment, which is what we're gonna be focusing on today, is to just get you guys in the mindset of how VRV works and how you should design around this technology because again, it's going to be different than mini splits. So that's gonna be today's video. Now, in upcoming episodes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down the next episode and focus on piping. Now, all the piping rules, RefNet branches, how those RefNet branches need to be installed, minimums, maximums, etc. Once everything is installed, the next video is going to be focused on pressure testing, evacuating the system, and calculating the additional refrigerant charge. We're going to tackle all three of those points in one video. The next video after that is going to be focused on wiring. Um, we're going to be doing a power up and verification of communication episode where I show you guys how to use the outdoor unit board 
if you guys have already purchased a VRVS system and you look at that outdoor unit board, there's a bunch of LEDs and those are often confusing for contractors and technicians until you learn what binary is. So I'm going to teach you all about binary in this series. We're going to go through some other things, some troubleshooting steps that you can do from the outdoor unit, such as forced fan on. We'll talk about resetting the addressing if you're adding or removing units at a later time. We'll do field settings. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on field settings because I have already done an entire series on the nav controller, the Madoka controller, and the Daikin 1 smart thermostat. So a lot of videos that are going to be part of this series. So keep your eyes peeled for those. Just wanted to give you guys that breakdown. So now we're going to go ahead. I'm going to pull up a whiteboard here and we can go ahead and we can start talking product. So the first thing we need to talk about is the differences between the mini split systems that you're probably used to and the Daikin VRV VRF systems that may be a little bit new to you. There's a couple of major differences between these two technologies, which I'll touch on briefly, but for a full breakdown, make sure to check out my What is VRF playlist. I have three episodes in that playlist. I'll put a card in the corner now for you. It goes into great detail on traditional heat pumps and how those work, mini splits and how those works compared to VRF systems, both VRVS single phase heat pumps and commercial VRV heat recovery systems where I break down all the differences in the technology, or I should say many of the differences in the technology's advantages, disadvantages of each. It's a great playlist, so check that out. For now, I will give you guys just the meat and potatoes. So one of the first things that you're going to need to understand is when you go to a VRF system, and this actually doesn't even necessarily mean a Daikin VRVS system. This is really a VRF system of any manufacturer out there, the indoor units require their own line voltage power. So on a mini split system where you're used to running line voltage 208, 230 single phase to the outdoor unit, and then you run four wires that carry both power and communication to the indoor unit, usually ran next to each of the line sets, this is a different animal. So your VRV indoor units, one of the other big things to keep in mind here, your VRV, your VRF indoor units, again, manufacturer alike, doesn't matter, Daikin, Mitsubishi, Coleman Hitachi, all of your indoor units have their own electronic expansion valve, not just a blower. So we have to have power at the head to power the blower and the electronic expansion valve and the board. The outdoor unit does not power the indoor unit. Okay, now in regards to communication, your communication wire, which we'll talk about in its own video, is going to be two wire communication wire. This is your low voltage. This is how the outdoor unit speaks to all the indoor units. That's different from what you're used to on a mini split where you have your four wires that carry both power and communication. And we'll talk more about how to run that wire, things to look out for in its own video, but it is one of the big differences between these two technologies. So usually one of the big things that comes up in the design process is when should I do a mini split or when should I do a VRF system, a Daikin VRVS or whoever's brand really. The big takeaway really comes down to application and sizing, which we'll talk about sizing in just a moment. When you're looking at a house, if you're going to be replacing a traditional heat pump system that the house already has all the ductwork set up. It's a very easy conversion to go with a Daikin VRVS outdoor unit with a line set, two wires up to an air handler, and basically just replace the old air handler with a new air handler. And now what you're going to get out of that VRF system is a much more robust system with better controls. It's a much higher efficient system. And we've actually talked about this in many, many videos, but a VRF system compared to a traditional heat pump can save you in operational costs up to 60% compared to that basic heat pump, that traditional non-inverter on off box style heat pump. So it's a much more efficient solution and it's going to give you better comfort control because VRF is designed to maintain the house temperature.
Speaking of maintaining the house temperature, this is really something that should be an inverter principle, whether it's a mini split or a VRF system, we always want to maintain. Those compressors are most efficient when they're operating at lower speeds. We don't want them turning on, ramping all the way up to try to recover your house temperature and then shutting off. We want them to just purr along at a nice slow speed to maintain that 70 degree set point that you have pretty much all the time. And if you guys have followed the channel, I talk about what I have on my house, a VRV Life, all the time. I pretty much leave my set points between 69 and 71 year around. I really don't change my temperature much. I don't set it back at night, don't need to. I can leave it, it's comfortable. It's a fantastic solution. So the other thing that we have to talk about is comfort control. So we're talking about maintaining your space temperature. And this is a big difference between mini splits and VRF. When you have a traditional heat pump or a traditional air conditioner, you are driving, you know, a start stop vehicle. There is no cruise control. There is no speed up and slow down. It is 100% throttle or 100% brake. When you go to an inverter compressor solution, the mini splits are your entry level inverter technology. That's like your Chevy Bolt. It's got the electric battery, but it is not going to have anything else. So it's efficient in an operational performance perspective compared to that traditional heat pump, that start stop vehicle. Your inverter mini split can save you up to 30% in operational costs. When you go to the VRF, the VRV S, the VRF technology, that is the Tesla. That's giving you the battery, but it's giving you the software. It's giving you the over the air updates, the full self driving package. It's giving you everything above and beyond what many, many people understand. And that's why VRVS is sometimes hard to understand, is because it's giving you so much more than a mini split. And really the big difference is how a VRVS is controlled compared to that inverter mini split. The VRF, the VRVS systems, that technology can save you up to 60% in your operational costs compared to a baseline traditional on-off heat pump. When it comes to room comfort specifically, there's this is the last point we're gonna talk on with the technology at play here. Your mini splits, because they are an entry level system, they are your baseline inverter, if you will. They come with the least amount of control. If you have a wall head, for example, like the Amira or just a regular wall head, these units sense temperature from the return air thermistor, which is installed in the head. The head is up high on the wall. Well, guess what? There's this thing called stratification where I'm sitting in my office and I'm sitting at, you know, normal sitting level at my desk and it is, let's say 70 degrees way up at my ceiling, 10 feet up in the air, it's probably going to be about 73, 74 degrees. Now every home is different and the amount of stratification will vary from home to home, area to area, country to country, state to state, etc. But you're still going to have stratification, hot air rises. So the unit is sensing temperature up by the ceiling and therefore when you're telling it to heat, to let's say 70 degrees, it knows that it's cooler down where you're sitting, where you're occupying the space. So it's going to offset that set point. We call that a target temperature. So instead of heating to 70, it's going to heat up to 73, 74, 75, and then it's gonna to try to maintain that. Well, the problem is on multi-zone mini split systems, you have this happening on two, three, four, five different indoor units, and you have very little EEV control. The electronic expansion valve is located at the outdoor unit, not at the indoor unit like it is on VRF systems. So what happens? The head overshoots. Why does the head overshoot? Well, because it's trying to maintain an offset temperature but the other head in a different room is still calling. So the compressor is ramped up. It's not ramped down and you have no overall fan speed control. So when it gets to its target temperature, you can't shut off the fan speed. Basically, if it's not sized perfectly and operated perfectly, your mini split system can very easily be uncomfortable. And You guys might even have mini splits at home and you might be watching this and going, hey, I have that problem. There's very little you can do, or I should say there was very little you could do in the past until the Daikin 1 thermostat came out because now you can hook, hook up a Daikin 1 to each of your indoor units and then basically program the head to physically shut off if it gets past the set point. 
So you have a little bit more control these days, but it's still nothing compared to what you can do on VRV. VRV systems have what we call field settings, basically parameters you can program on the indoor unit through the thermostat that tells it how tight to control that room temperature. When that room temperature gets to a particular set point, you can program the fan to do different things. You can program the fan to go to an ultra low setting that just trickles air through the space. The idea is to keep the air, to keep the room as consistently treated as possible. But if that's uncomfortable, you can shut the fan off as tight as one degree past set point. So I digress. It's a lot of information here to kind of get through. I do recommend check out my series on what is VRF because it goes through in way more detail and in not spoken so fast terms. The difference is in these two technologies. But at the end of the day, what you really need to know is you have better control, better comfort, and you have better cost saving. So it's more efficient, more comfortable, more efficient. So now that we know a little bit about the technology, let's talk about the product. What are my options when I'm purchasing a VRVS system? One of the big caveats is when you're sizing a home, you can't pick a VRVS system technically until you get to three tons. The smallest heat pump available is a three ton heat pump. And then you have a four ton and then you have a five ton heat pump available. Now, one of the cool things about VRVS is it does allow you to connect a minimum of 50% ratio, which means if I have a three ton unit, I could technically connect a one and a half ton indoor unit. And that VRV system is going to ramp down and it's going to give you one and a half tons of capacity. The idea with connecting a one and a half ton unit now to a three ton outdoor is that I'm going to come back later and I'm going to add another one and a half ton unit. So one of the coolest things about VRVS from a design standpoint is I can hook up one unit now, come back later and hook up another indoor unit or two more indoor units or three more indoor units. I could connect two now, come back later and add three more units. It's very, very flexible. When you're designing, when you're installing VRVS, one of the key takeaways I always tell my guys in classes is that VRVS gives you the flexibility for design and for comfort. If the homeowner doesn't quite have enough in the budget to do the full remodel of their home today, no problem. Let's do the first floor now. We can come back in six months, a year, two years, whenever, and do the second floor later. So this is a very neat feature. It's a great flexible solution to a lot of the issues we have today. So basically your options for connecting to a three, four and a five ton unit, you can connect at least one indoor unit, which is great. Multi-zone mini splits, you have to have at least two units connected. You're not supposed to hook up one. They don't operate properly that way. Well, VRVS, you can hook up one. And then on the three ton unit, you can hook up to a maximum of six indoor units. On the four ton, you can have a maximum of eight and on the five ton, a maximum of nine. So quickly, let's compare ton for ton what you have available on VRV now, because it's going to give you more flexibility in design. On the three ton unit, I can have at least one and I can have up to six indoor units connected. Compare that, if you will, to anybody's three-ton multi-zone mini-split. Usually on a three-ton multi-zone mini-split, the maximum number of connectable indoor units is four. They call it a 4MXS36 on the Daikin side, or I think on Mitsubishi it's 4MXZ uh, because it's a four-port outdoor unit. For example, on Daikin I can have up to six. So on a four-ton I can have up to eight. If you go to Daikin's 5MXS48, their four ton multi-zone mini split, you can only have five. So I can have more indoor units on a VRV system than I can on a multi-zone mini split system. When we get into the piping video here, I think it's gonna be the next video we do, you're gonna see a huge, huge advantage when it comes to piping on a VRV system because they only use one line set. They branch off to each head as they go. Picture, if you will, a four port outdoor unit, four individual ports, 
each with a line set or a five port outdoor unit. That's 10 pieces of copper going up someone's wall. And at least in my opinion, I think it's a little ridiculous. Anytime you get to the three ton range or larger, anytime you get to three indoor units on one outdoor unit or more, your price difference between a multi-zone mini split and a VRVS system aren't quite equal, but they're getting real close. VRVS is still a little bit more expensive. It's a high-end product. You have to pay a little bit more up front for it. Saves you in the long run by far and way more comfortable, but it is a little bit more costly up front. As far as the tonnages go, three, four, and five tons, the cabinet of the three and the four ton, the outdoor unit cabinet physical size is one fan. So it actually looks just like a mini split. It's a very small, compact unit. You could fit two, three of them in your truck, possibly. If you have a big house, we have plenty of homes around the Seattle market where we're doing two and three of these systems, totally separate systems on one home. The five ton is going to be double fan. It's going to be a little bit taller. If you guys have watched any of my videos where I show you my outdoor unit at home, you've seen it. It's really not that tall. It's just a two fan module versus a one fan module. So you're three and four in a small one. You're five tons in a little bit of a taller cabinet. All right, you guys. So I'm looking at my time and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to break our video off here. We will jump into the next segment of information in the next video. I just want to make sure I don't make these videos too long for you guys. There's so much information that I want to share. I want it to be valuable and I don't want to bore you guys to death. So uh, stay tuned for the next video where we will keep talking about this technology, combination ratios, uh, equipment selection. Um, if you guys enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I really enjoy engaging with you guys and having really good discussions. You guys have brought up a lot of great points so far uh, just for me having this channel this year. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, Put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer all of them. I do read all of your comments, you guys. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. That really helps out my channel. We're trying to grow. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. That is my goal for this year, 2021, is get to a thousand. I think that'd be awesome. It'd be a good achievement for me considering when I first started, I really had no idea if this was even going to work. But hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching Inverter Always. You guys, I hope you have an awesome day.